Well, we're here on Surtsey, a wonderful microcosm of a geologic environments here on Earth to learn how to explore the planet Mars. And in this wonderful natural laboratory, we can take stock of the many geologic environments we expect to learn and explore on the planet Mars. We've come all the way, 50 kilometers from the nearest land, uh, the island of Iceland, to explore Mars on Earth, a natural laboratory, basically a scientific oasis for how to understand the Mars that we will be exploring with our Mars exploration rovers. Here on Little Surtsey, we have all the ingredients that we're looking for as we explore Mars. Volcanoes, water, the interaction of them, unique sedimentary processes, all this in one little place. This is science at its best, and we're here to conduct overland exploration. And I, for one, am so excited I gotta get started. So we're off to explore the real Surtsey, Mars on Earth. Surtsey, we're struck by how much like the Mars of our mind's eye um, that we see. The volcanic rocks, their arrangement on the ground, uh, the lay of the land, the swales and the slopes, the patterns of the sediments that were laid down by a volcano. This is the way we imagine the Mars, and we're looking for that. In fact, as I look around, I can see many of the processes that we're anticipating to be exploring with our Mars rovers. Just here, a rock made by the action of volcanoes and sediments. You can knock off a piece and see right here what this rock is like. Here is the kind of stuff where water and lava interacted to make the kind of rocks we're looking for on Mars. Doesn't get any better than this here on Surtsey. I mean, look at this. Here is debris flow city, as you'd say. This is what we're seeing on Mars at the same scale. And here it is in Iceland. We're looking at the toes of debris that have run out of gas just due to the amount of energy and water involved in the system. Layers of sedimentary uh, materials made by volcanoes, the action of water slowly and inexorably tearing them down, eroding them, forming these beautiful gullies. These are fresh landforms, the likes of which we see today on Mars as we see them today on Surtsey. So here we are on a special kind of plane here on Surtsey. It reminds us of some of the things we're looking for you know, on Mars, where it's windy, just like here. In fact, probably windier than here on Surtsey, um, known as Meridiani, where we expect to see layers uh, of rocks arranged in a, in a pavement, not, not unlike this. Rocks embedded in the pavement, and maybe, just maybe, minerals lying on the surface that will tell us that water once sat on Mars and made the minerals in the rocks just like the water that was recently here did on Surtsey. And look at it. We see of an extremely smooth surface and it preserves rocks that are stuck in the matrix. Here's a rock that's been eroded out of this very smooth plane. So here on this windy spot on Surtsey, we have a, yet another little analog to one of the things we're looking for to understand on the planet Mars. And now we're moving into the erosional gullies of the foreland of Surtsey, where the water has erupted to produce river channels layered by clays, covered with gravels, showing us the stratigraphy of the island. This is the skeleton of Surtsey. We're looking for layers on Mars because they tell a story of the assembly of the, of the rocks. And in that story, when there's water, there's a possibility of records of environments. So it's possible that in Meridiani, we will see layers around the pavements that will tell us a story not unlike this. Now here on Surtsey, we have spectacular story right here in these layers where the island was constructed explosively. And here's the contact where that island formed an initial surface and then it rained down ash, making all these beautiful layers. This is the kind of stuff we'd love to find on Mars. Warm, wet ashes, making landscapes and preserving their record right up here in the rocks in these little gravels. That's why we come here, to figure out the clues to Mars. And just at this little scale of my foot, if you can look down, you can see a micro river channel system. This, at the scale of a human being, at a rover scale, tells us a complete story. The water ran, it carved the clays, it carved the, the, the canyon, 
carved the gully at the beginning, and now it shows its river course. This was wet yesterday, and someday on Mars, we'll send rovers up into canyons like this in gully places to look for the clues in the Mars rocks. Well, here we are exploring the volcanic sedimentary terrains um, that may resemble the Meridiani site, and look what we found. Perhaps the kind of holy grail we're looking on on Mars. This is a natural steam vent, a fissure steam vent system that's making sediments. This kind of system on Mars would be the, would be the penultimate. These steam vents here on Surtsey are modern testaments to the processes that may have made the hematite that coats the Meridiani site. It coats the surfaces here. You can see some of these red stains are oxides of iron and actually calcite here on Circe. This would be the kind of thing we'd love to find, even a fossil version of this at the Meridiani site. Our opportunity site for that rover would be the greatest discovery on Mars in the present lifetime. So here on Circe, we have the microcosm, the volcanic sediments, the steam vents, all together in one little place. The scale of a human being, at the scale of a rover. So we can study them. And here you can see the beginnings of growing algae, moss, favoring this kind of warm, wet environment. And that's those kind of environments in the record books of Mars are what we want to understand. So the power of the analogy, seeing Mars on Earth here at Circe, and then looking for the Earth on Mars on that distant red planet, trying to experience what it might have been. This is our destiny. This is why coming to Circe is so unbelievably exciting to me, feeling as if I'm on Mars.